to the podcast series Addressing DMD Time to Diagnosis Through Dialogue and Education with Pediatricians. Today we are talking with Dr. Crystal Proud from Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters. This is Dr. Crystal Proud, and I'd like to discuss the two-prong approach for evaluation and diagnosis of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. If there is possible concern for muscular weakness that might include a diagnosis of Duchenne muscular dystrophy, we want to consider both a therapeutic and a diagnostic avenue for the patient. And this does not have to be mutually exclusive. In fact, it shouldn't be. We hope that we can pursue therapeutic intervention and support for the patient at the same time that we are diagnosing. This will ensure that there is no lag in care or initiation of standards of care. From a therapeutic perspective, if a child is at a well visit and identified as having muscular weakness, it is perfectly reasonable and appropriate to refer that boy for intervention with things like physical therapy or occupational therapy. They may also need some accommodation within the school system or otherwise. However, we don't want to stop at just the therapeutic support. We truly need to understand why is this boy experiencing weakness? And this takes us to the diagnostic approach. If we simply refer to therapies at the time that we've identified motor delay or weakness, and we say, I'm just going to give it a little more time and reassess, we may miss an opportunity to have early diagnosis of a disease that could be benefited from other sorts of therapeutics and interventions, and something that may require subspecialty care. So if in addition to providing therapies, it becomes a reflex to also pursue diagnostics, this will ultimately serve our boys the best. From a diagnostic perspective, the boy should be referred to a pediatric neurologist or neuromuscular specialist, and at that point, they will undergo a neurologic assessment. A complete neurologic evaluation will include history taking from the family and their observations, In addition, a complete neurological assessment may be performed, including a motor function assessment. If there is availability of a physical therapist or someone who is trained to perform some standardized testing, that may be done. So for example, when a boy comes to see me and I have concerns for muscular weakness, my physical therapist will perform certain standardized testing, such as what's called a supine to stand time, where she will time how long it takes for a boy to go from lying down to standing up. She also will assess how long it takes him to walk 10 meters down the hall. She also will time how long it takes for him to ascend and descend four stairs. The North Star Ambulatory Assessment Score will also be performed. These assessment tools are best utilized in a neuromuscular center where individuals are familiar with those scales and trained in how to administer them. If the child is not being evaluated in such a center where they are familiar with these tools, a comprehensive neurologic exam will identify areas of weakness and should prompt further testing. The initial test that might be the most helpful is the CK. And traditionally, I tell families, I see that your child has weakness. I'm concerned that this weakness indicates that there is muscle instability. And so I'm going to send a blood test that is going to look for the possibility of muscle breakdown. Unfortunately, if this muscle test is elevated, showing that there is significant muscle breakdown, because we are evaluating a boy of this particular age, the most common muscular dystrophy is Duchenne muscular dystrophy. If the CK results significantly elevated, this indicates that there is, in fact, muscle breakdown and is consistent with a dystrophic process. 
traditionally, these boys have a CK level in the multiple thousands. Most of my boys will have a result between 10 and 25,000. So this is not just a mild elevation of CK. Because their CK level has demonstrated that they have a dystrophic process, the next step is identifying uh, what is the molecular change that is leading to that dystrophic process. And this is where molecular testing comes in. This can be done either through blood or through a cheek swab. DNA is collected and analyzed and can be sent specifically for Duchenne muscular dystrophy testing or even broader molecular panels that if the Duchenne muscular dystrophy testing is negative, would perhaps reflex to a broader group of other sorts of dystrophic processes, like limb girdle muscular dystrophies, for example. Once the molecular testing has resulted identifying that the child has a change consistent with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, we can institute multidisciplinary care and standards of care. Thank you for listening and make sure you listen to other episodes in the podcast series Addressing DMD Time to Diagnosis Through Dialogue with Education with Pediatricians. 